This morning's scripture passage comes from Mark's gospel. It is the fifth chapter, still the very beginnings of, of Christ's ministry and as we look at Mark's gospel. And he had just finished um, expelling uh, some demons from a man. And uh, he's on his way now uh, on the other side of, of the sea. And he is approached by an official of the church, of the synagogue. His name was Jairus. And Jairus approaches Christ and asks that he might come and heal his 12-year-old daughter. And Jesus agrees. And while on the way, an interesting thing happens, something that never happens in Scripture. That, As, as Mark writes the story of the journey to Jairus' daughter, to that healing, he is interrupted. And while he is walking, a, a woman who was suffering from uh, a, a bleeding uh, for the last 12 years has spent all of her money. She's at the bottom of the barrel, has nothing left, and all is gone. And she has one last, one last hope. And so she says to herself, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I can be healed. And so there's this large crowd, and she makes her way through the crowd. Now, recognize she was unclean. So what she was doing uh, was a dangerous thing for her because she could have been stoned for touching someone, particularly a rabbi, while she was unclean. But she takes the risk. She has nothing and nothing to lose. So she reaches out and touches him. She's healed, and, and she feels it, and she knows it, and suddenly Christ, the man she had come to, to have faith in as the Messiah, turns and says, who touched me? Now, the, the apostles are aghast. What, what are you talking about? Look at all these folks. Everybody has touched you. And, and he said, no, who touched me? And, and the woman, I, I, in my mind's eye, the, the, the crowd separates, and there she is with her head down. And Christ sees her. As he sees you and I in those moments of, of despair, he says to her, your faith has healed you. And she is, is just wondrous. All these years she had been spending her money trying to be healed again. And just like that, the faith that she didn't know she had, <laughs> this faith that was, was exhibited by her pain, by, by her remorse, by her concern, by her worry, by her, down, her downtrodden way. It was revealed in the midst of her pain, her faith. Hmm. Now, the story doesn't end there. Christ continues his journey to see Jairus' daughter, and when he gets there, he does heal her and asks that someone feed her. Now, What's the difference between these two who were healed? One had an advocate and was, you know, the upper crust, the daughter of a, an official. She had an advocate. She had, she had uh, things going her way. Then there was the other woman who had no advocate, bottom of the barrel. But the one who had the advocate, the one who had a place in society had to wait until the one who was poor was healed. The one who had no advocate. The only advocate she had was herself and her pain and her history and her faith. You see, Christ has affinity for the poor. The rich had to wait so that the poor could be healed. So the question becomes for you and I, who do we advocate for? Or do we only advocate for ourselves or our family? Or do we reach out into the community, to the poor, to those who have nothing, who may have left their place of safety or concern to find a better place? Have we advocated for them? Or do we only advocate for ourselves? That's the question. And our comparison, our guide, our, the one that we compare ourselves to is Jesus. He advocates for the poor, and so are we. So when we ask that question, Lord, what are we going to do today? Why don't we just say advocate for the poor? Because <laughs> I know my friend, the mom of a dear friend, Elizabeth, is advocating. 
Now, Charlotte is advocating for the poor, and so is my little friend, Aspen. So if you're not doing anything this Sunday, please, if you're in New York, come to St. Gregory the Great in the Holy Name of Jesus Parish in, in Manhattan. I'll be there at all the Masses. May God bless you. Lord, what are we going to do today?